Hi, friends. Good, uh, good evening. Hi. Hi, I'm Sandy Morano. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Fred. I'm Carol Sabato. I know that, Carol. <laughs> and I'm going to share uh, my screen so everybody can see this nice presentation that you've put together here. Oh, nice. <laughs> Okay. okay. Safe voting. These are our instructions related to COVID. Next slide, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so this is what you should be thinking about as we near primary day. Of course, you're doing these things anyway, but maintain good social distance. Wear a mask anytime you believe you may not be able to maintain good social distance. And always when you're going inside, really, when you're going inside anywhere except for your own home. Avoid large groups, including family gatherings. I know this is something I've enjoyed, not really large groups, but I have enjoyed having my children over, but we have spread ourselves out in my backyard so that we maintained our good social distance. Um, wash your hands more than ever. And this is very important. If you believe you have come into contact with anyone who is not well or who has been exposed to someone diagnosed with COVID virus, let Fred or me know immediately. Do not hesitate to call us even at the last minute. It won't be a problem. I mean, we're counting on you to help us out on election day, but if you, if any, if there's any issue at all, uh, it's fine to cancel at the last minute. We'll still be very happy to hire you for the November election. And um, because everyone's safety is by far the most important thing. It's fine to cancel if you have COVID or you think you do. But if you just are like, I, what have I gotten myself into because yes. of the ballot? Yes. Exactly. You know, that's really like not the same kind of. Yeah. No. Okay. I knew I could count on you, Fred. That's good. Fair enough. Okay. Next page. Okay. So there is, you can get a quick results COVID test, supposedly. I've heard some people have had success with this. So if you have a concern, um, there is a 20 minute test uh, turnaround available at this walk-in clinic in Stanford. Um, I, am, I will be sharing this information with you on an email so you don't need to worry about you know, noting down the information. Um, there we go, friend. Okay, now we're on primary day, August 11th. Or actually, for some of you, Fred and I learned this morning that we will also be processing uh, or doing the very beginning part of processing some absentee ballots, um, just the envelope portion of the ballots themselves on Monday, August 10th from noon until 4 p.m. So if anybody is interested in uh, that additional um, uh, uh, work possibility, just, just let us know. We'll be contacting people about it. So on either August 10th, if you're involved with that effort or on August 11th, take your temperature before you come and call us if you have a fever. Uh, we will not be providing any food or beverages during the day. So um, we're asking poll workers to um, supply their own food and beverages. We're going to be increasing your salaries will increase by $15. And um, please wear a mask to enter the town hall. You're actually required to wear a mask. And we will be having masks on for absentee ballot all day because we're all working together 
in one room, there'll be almost, there'll be 19 of us. And um, so we, we really do need to have the masks on all day. Uh, please when please you get understand, for those who don't know the room, I don't mean to interrupt. It is yes. a big room though. And it's designed yes. specifically that, you know, we can maintain social distance between pairs, there's plexiglass barriers, et cetera. So yes. while it is a lot of people in a room, it's a very large room. Yes, and um, um, well, I, uh, on the mask issue, obviously we don't want you to feel that you have to wear a mask from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. But when you're in the town hall, and, or in the cone room, you do need to wear the mask. But if you feel you need a break and you need to remove that mask, don't do not hesitate. Ask us, and we'll be delighted to give you a break. Um, we will have a lot of additional supplies there: additional masks, disposable gloves. I don't know, Fred, if you have that handy picture of the. Um, the prom queen in the uh I, yeah i unfortunately you don't I, have it. I may yeah. i may pull it up uh during your other presentation okay I'll, I'll good like yeah see if i can find yeah. it so we will also have a shield a face shield which i i believe i'm planning to wear um okay i think we're good there fred thanks okay um I have understood from my research that wearing disposable gloves when processing the absentee ballots is probably a good idea. It's definitely not required. You may just feel more comfortable because you're, you are exchanging ballots with your partner to do recounts and that sort of thing. Um, we will have plenty of hand sanitizer. Um, if you do wear gloves, I suggest replacing them every hour or so. Um, you can sanitize the gloves. Um, of course, use the hand sanitizer anytime you leave the room, anytime you come back to the room, when you're uh, going to the restroom, and really anytime you want, anytime you believe you come into contact with a surface outside your particular work area. Okay, Fred, thanks. Okay. And you have our contact information. We'll be sending you this, and uh, we can move on. Okay. So, uh, before we uh, get started on uh, the next portion, it's time for the first answer for the quiz. <laughs> so, let me uh, put it up here. We have three. As I said, there's going to be uh, three uh, questions that uh, people are going to need to um, uh, answer who are watching this on uh, YouTube once we post it tomorrow. So they'll need to write the answer down and they'll be emailing it in to either Lynn or Ruby. So the first answer, Florence Nightingale. Okay. <laughs> So uh, again, you guys don't have to worry about it, but for those people who are going to be watching on YouTube, Florence Nightingale is answer number one. Okay. Now, uh, before Mary gets into the second meaty part of the presentation, I want to, uh, oh, I was looking at herd immunity before, as you can see, um, studying up. Uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to just show you how it is that you um, can find all of our training materials online in case you want to review something later on. So if you go to GreenwichCT.gov slash vote, that takes you directly to our page on the Town of Greenwich website. And there you will see I want to work at the polls. If you click on that, these are documents that uh, we have new for new poll workers. Poll worker 101 explains the basics of being a poll worker. 
an application, which some of you may have actually filled out to be here today, and training materials. The presentation that you're watching today, uh, the, the, the PDF, excuse me, the PowerPoints, et cetera, will be posted tomorrow. So you're welcome to go back and review them at any time. And I, I should say also that I am planning to, I have a more detailed document that I've put together given some of the unusual aspects of absentee voting uh, counting this year. So I will, I do plan to email that around, but we could also put a link, I, um, Fred, I guess on the website to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be emailing you several things like a reminder on the, you know, the meals and stuff like that. But yeah. um, you can always go to our website in the poll worker section, and you'll see um, all of the information, links to these videos, things like that. Okay, so uh, Mary, I guess we're ready for? Yes, for the ABCD of hand counting ABs. So we are going to be uh, hand counting ballots, which is a bit unusual. And so it changes the procedures a bit for those of you who have worked in absentee ballot, um, in the absentee ballot counting room before. And um, the reason Fred and I decided to do this, we felt that without using the tabulator machine, we would be minimizing some contact points. And because on both the Democratic and the Republican ballots, there's only one office that is being voted on. It's a very simple, um, uh, situation to use a hand count in. So there we go. Who are we? So 19 people will accomplish Greenwich's absentee ballot count. We have Chris Daly, the Democratic moderator, uh, Gail Cochin, the Republican moderator, myself, I'll be in the absentee ballot uh, counting all day, and then eight pairs of absentee ballot counters. So 19 people, and I think we have a very um, orderly system planned that we should, you know, have a, uh, a day without stress and um, accomplish our tasks smoothly. So when uh, I mentioned before that because of a um, decision Fred and I received this morning from the um, Secretary of State's office, that we are now allowed to do some pre-processing of ballot envelopes on Monday. And we've arranged with the town clerk to, uh, it, to do this because we do have an unprecedented number of ballots. And if we can get a, a large batch of the envelopes um, pre-counted before the primary day, it will help us. And then of course the primary day. And you know, Fred, I didn't get a chance to check with you, but these were the times that I, it may be that the times will change a little when Fred and I, we've been discussing all week the plans and different uh, scenarios have come up, but I thought that this time frame seemed correct, and if it if it doesn't seem right, we can let everybody know. I think that's fine. Um, if everything goes according to plan, the counters day should be over by fairly soon after eight p.m. The counters, being those teams of eight, those of you that are the moderators and maybe a couple of others will have to kind of look at it. You know, there are ballots expected at 8 p.m. because people have a drop box that they're able to put the ballots in up until 8 p.m. Mail, mail is done by noon, but because there are these special drop boxes, one at the police station and one at town hall, we are expecting people are gonna be driving up and leaving ballots. So there are gonna be ballots that are going to be need to be unsealed at 8 p.m. So most can leave. Some get to the privilege of staying. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> okay. All right, Fred. 
And where are we? We're in the cone room, which is the conference room right at the top. Uh, well, on the second floor, right as you get out of the elevators. So there are stairs. Not it's it's a, a decent flight of stairs, but um, uh, it's not that bad. So if you want to take the stairs, by all means, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can social distance, and the town recommends no more than two people in the elevator at any one time. Town hall is very quiet because it's only by appointment, so it's really not uh, an issue that you're going to find um, any crowds. Well, I, I should though mention that there will be there is a uh, uh, in-person polling place in town hall, so there there will be some voters entering and leaving town hall during the day. Right, but they're never going to be in the elevator. No. No, oh, yeah. they actually are not allowed to be in the elevator. No. Oh. No, the other people that are ah. there polling, if they're doing, but you're allowed it if you want to go in the elevator. Yes, yes, yes. you you certainly can take the elevator if you want. I was talking about they're yeah, trying the in town hall to keep people um, right. in certain areas, otherwise, it creates a big cleaning issue. So, exactly. So um, we uh, have a plan um, that was um, drawn up for us by somebody in the Department of Public Works for the cone room that lays out the tables. And uh, as Fred mentioned, there's a plexiglass screen in between you and your partner. Um, and um, we would like you to once you establish yourself on a certain table and chair, we'd like you to stay with that for the day. Um, during the day, uh, do not, well, it's possible we may have a couple of people in a corner of the room that's designated for them observing our process. The state law uh, requires that we allow observers to um, watch the absentee ballot processing at any point in the day. If we do have a couple of those people, it's very important not to announce any tallies that you're doing, even though they won't be a final tally of any kind. It's just better not to speak loudly um, of any tallies. But Mary, uh, they're, yes. not, they're not permitted to talk to us. They have to be silent, right? At one of the, one of the, poll, one of the voting days, and they, the one lady just butt right in and she just kept talking and talking and talking. I want to say, be quiet. We have work to do. <laughs> Good. I like it, Gail. Well, I don't know that there's a state law that they have to be quiet, but I do think it would be perfectly reasonable if we're trying to concentrate and get our work done to ask people to uh, not, you know, if they need to talk, they could go out into the hallway and talk, would be my suggestion. No, they wanted to talk to get information. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you know, I'll be there all day, and I'm a very good source of information. I could go out into the hallway and talk to them if they need something. My guess is we may have one or two or maybe no observers for this primary day. Election day could be different. Okay. So if you have other questions, please contact me or Fred. We're, you know, we're, we're there to answer your questions. And you. when, you, when you have questions on primary day, uh, you should speak to one of the moderators or to me. And Fred is going to be down in the Registrar of Voters office answering the questions that come up at the various, um, oh shoot, at the various in-person um, polling places. And, but he's, he will, you know, he and I will be able to communicate at the drop of a hat if we, if and questions develop. I have, I have another question and that's yes. concerning our food. Are we allowed to bring food with us? Yes. Like, you know, lunch or dinner? Or okay. So I think that might be my next slide. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Repeat. Yes. She's, that's going to be her next slide, maybe. Yes. And I know that they have, they, so they, the key yeah. thing is, as I mentioned, you cannot take your mask off in the absentee ballot room. But if you need a break, don't hesitate to speak up. Your wish will be granted. 
snacks and drinks cannot be consumed in the AB County Room because then you would be removing your, ba your mask. We will be giving everybody an additional $15 onto their um, uh, full worker pay to cover the cost of um, each person bringing their own food and drink with them. And if you want, um, if you're having a break you and you, you want to have your lunch or uh, uh, just a break, you can either leave the town hall um, and sit outside if it's a nice day, or um, we will be, uh, the, the Hayton Conference Room on the third floor will be available to us. It will be set aside for absentee ballot workers to take breaks, not for anybody else. And um, in that room, you can take off your mask as long as you, uh, maybe you don't have more than a couple people in the room at a time and you sit quite far from each other. Yeah, it's a nice size room, uh, plenty of space for three or four people to be very spread apart if you wanted to, uh, you know, three or four people having lunch at the same time. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a substantial uh, size room and it is only, conference rooms have not been open in town hall since COVID started. They are opening this room and cleaning this room and then closing it down specifically for us and for you uh, in particular, okay, the people who are working in the absentee ballot room. Fred, are you going to go over tonight the actual working, like how we'll, you know, open the envelopes or whatever is going <clears> to <throat> happen that day? Uh, yes. Those, those slides are coming, Gail. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank this you. This was... We're, we're still in the odds and ends, but we're almost out of them. This might have been the end. Here we are. We're, you, Gail, twice now, you've been exactly cueing us for the next thing. <laughs> so here we have the no, A, B, C, D of A, B hand counting. There's four basic things that happen. First, we have to verify the number of ballots that the town clerk has handed over to us. And funny. then we have to process the envelopes, which is a pretty technical process. Then we have to sort the ballots. And the simplest thing of all is counting the ballots. So luckily, after we've done those other things, we're, we come to the simplest thing. But of course, maybe the most important. Okay. So verifying the number of ballots that have been given to us by the town clerk will take place on the Monday afternoon time that I mentioned from noon until 4 p.m. And at the beginning of each delivery of ballots on Tuesday, primary day, we, are, we will be having ballots delivered to us three times at 10 o'clock on Tuesday, some of the, some or all of those will be pre-counted um, Monday. Not, the ballots will not be processed, but the envelopes will be pre-counted. We'll have another delivery at two o'clock and then the final delivery very shortly after eight o'clock. Um, and we're ready for the next slide. So, Verifying the number of ballots. The gist is the town clerk will be dividing envelopes of ballots by party and by district. So we will end up with 24, I hope I'm doing this right, 24 batches of envelopes. What we will want to do district by district is clip together batches of 50 envelopes. You'll be working with the partner and you'll always be verifying each other's counts. In the end, we'll sum up the batches of the 50 envelopes plus any leftovers that don't exactly add up to um, 50 we'll, and we'll confirm that this matches the number of ballots that the town clerk's cover sheet says that she turned over to us. 
So that is the gist of verifying the number of ballots. There are some wrinkles. There are very detailed instructions that I'll be sending to you by email. And as I mentioned, we stand ready to answer any questions. What I think about this whole absentee ballot processing is that a lot of the things sound, may sound more complex than mm -hmm. they actually turn out to be when you're there doing the process. Right. Okay, Fred. Um, now the second major thing that will happen is uh, that we're processing the envelopes. So we've now counted the envelopes. Now we're actually beginning to open the envelopes. The, one of the moderators or both of them will be distributing ballot envelopes that will be bundled, bundled in those batches of 50 that we just described. One of the interesting things for this um, primary is that because the Secretary of the State has mailed out, um, uh, is mailing out absentee ballots to people who have applied um, there will be two types of envelopes that we'll be processing. The normal type, the one that you're familiar with, which is the town clerk uh, packet that has an outer envelope and an inner envelope. And then the envelope that will be sent, um, the ballot envelope that will be sent um, through the Secretary of State's mailhouse, which does not Neither Fred nor I have seen it yet, but we understand it does not have an outer envelope. Well, there's nothing there's nothing relevant on the outer envelope. Most likely, by the time it gets to you, the outer envelope will be gone, and they'll just yes. I, I'm sorry. Envelope. Yes, yeah. yes, that's a better way to say it. Yeah. Next, I was, uh, Mary, can you explain that one more time about the S O two S O T S? Okay, the Secretary of the State, the SOTS, she, um, you know, she sent out absentee ballot applications to all registered Democrats and Republicans. And people who sent back that application um, had that application processed into the state voter registration system. And now the same mailhouse is sending out to all those people their absentee ballots. But the format of those, I mean, the ballot itself is the same, but the envelope situation is not the same. It doesn't have the same outer envelope with information and inner envelope that we're used to as an absentee ballot packet. So it just has a, uh, a blank, outer envelope, I guess you'd call it, that doesn't offer us any information. And then it has the um, inner envelope where you'll still find the signature of the voter and that sort of thing. So Fred, that's a little bit different than what we've encountered before. Correct. And that's why we're talking about it. So um, the important part is the ballots remain sealed until election day. Right. When you look at this special new envelope, okay, it will have the signature and the name of the voter on it. I know usually that's two different pieces. That's all going to be on one envelope. So once you verify that and we slice it open, and I think Mary will be going into that, the ballot's right inside. So, but the important part, as you know, from processing is we're checking to make sure that the envelope's been stamped by the town clerk with a, uh, a time stamp, that there's uh, a signature on it, and those other things. Once you see it, Gail, and I wish we had one, but nobody has actually <laughs> seen these envelopes yet because they get yeah. very late by the Secretary of the State. So all we have is a description from them. But just imagine all the information that's currently on the outer envelope is now on that inner envelope um, that, you know, and there's just going to be the one envelope. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll wait and see. 
Yes, exactly. We're, right. If we're I all think as Mary, as Mary said, the words, we're using a lot of words to describe it because we have no picture to show you, et cetera. Once you yeah. see it, it's going to be like, okay, I slice it open, I pull out the ballot, and I, you know, it's, it, it'll all be pretty much the same. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're opening envelopes. And in this case, I'm talking about processing the absentee ballot packet that you're familiar with. So this is the one that has the outer envelope and the inner envelope. So in this case, you we have a machine that's an automatic envelope slitting machine. And we, we actually are gonna have two of these machines in the, in the cone room. And we call the machine Boomer. It is a bit noisy. You can slit the outer envelope using Boomer. So you're gonna check and see if Boomer is available and then bring a batch of 50 outer uh, envelopes to Boomer and you, Boomer will slit them open for you. You bring them back to your table and then you peer into the envelopes. And what you're looking for here is to see whether the ballot is contained within the inner envelope. Now we have a very liberal interpretation of what is in the inner envelope. So even if the ballot is outside the inner envelope, but the flap of the inner envelope is hanging over the ballot, we will call that in the inner envelope and acceptable. But if the ballot is not in any way inside the inner envelope, call the moderator over, the ballot needs to be rejected. You're now removing the inner envelope from the outer envelope. And once all of these have been removed, you're banding the outer envelopes together. And we have a new innovation. We have an orange cover sheet. And you'll just simply place those with the orange cover sheet for now. You'll repeat the process um, until all the envelopes in your particular um, bundle of envelopes is processed. It'll be a whole district's worth. Right of one party or the other. Yeah, it doesn't matter which party. Right. Okay. Now, the inner envelopes. And this could be either the inner envelope of the um, regular town clerk's outer and inner envelope situation, or it could be the inner envelope um, which, yeah, I wasn't, I, it, it could be the Secretary of the State's envelope. Now, I, Fred made a good point earlier. I wasn't really thinking about that outer cover on the envelope as anything, but the, it, yeah. Anyway, Boomer, the machine is not to be used for opening either the Secretary of the State type envelope or the inner envelope of the town clerk. The, the inner envelopes need to be opened uh, using your uh, letter opener. So you're gonna open them manually, but very carefully uh, so that you don't uh, inadvertently damage the ballot. Remove the ballot, but leave the ballots folded on your table. This is to protect voter privacy. Once you've removed them all, you band all the inner envelopes together and put them with the orange cover sheet. Eventually, when you've processed all the inner envelopes, you already processed all the outer envelopes, you'll create a brick by banding together the already banded together inners, outers, and there will also be some rejected envelopes, like the one I mentioned earlier uh, 
the, uh, the ballot was not contained within an inner envelope and had to be rejected. You have, you've made your brick, we've got a big elastic that allows you to do this, and then you give your brick to the moderator who will place it in a carton, and once the car carton is full of bricks, we'll seal the carton with non-reusable tape. I think that's it there, Fred. Okay, now you have, we're on to sorting the ballots. So you have a stack of folded ballots on your table. So divide your stack with your partner, shuffle the ballots before you unfold them. And now you're going to examine the ballots. Who did the voter vote for? What's important here is that voter intent governs. Now, this is not likely to be much of an issue when we're talking about as simple a ballot as what we have for this primary. It would be more an issue in November when there's more, um, more positions uh, being contested on the ballot. If you have any doubt about who, who the voter is casting their vote for, put the ballot in a review pile for the moderator to look at. Um, you divide your ballots into piles, but you're always exchanging with your partner to check the sort so that two people are looking through and being sure that they agree that the vote was either for Biden, Gabbard, Sanders, De La Fuente, Trump, or the other category will be uncommitted Democrat and uncommitted Republican. When the, <coughs> excuse me, when the sorting is complete, you're putting your sorted piles in the appropriate to be counted carton that are sitting on top of, uh, of the table that you will be, we'll all give ourselves a, a uh, visual tour of the room when we, when we get there. Okay, Fred, thanks. Okay, now the moderator, one of the moderators will instruct a pair of the counters to take a bunch of ballots from a to be counted carton. Counter one will count a batch of 50 ballots. And at the same time, they will also verify that the sorting was correct, that the correct, you know, they're taking a to be counted from De La Fuente's box as they count 50, they will see that they that there didn't somehow get a ballot of uh, Trump's was mixed in there inadvertently. So you'll be confirming that you'll be counting a batch of 50, clipping that batch, and then passing that 50 ballots over to your partner, who will uh, do the exact same thing. And you'll repeat until there's nothing left to batch. Now, ballots that don't make up a batch of 50 are, should be put back into the candidate's to-be-counted carton because somebody else may be also counting in that carton and they may be able to, you know, eventually get up to 50 there. So um, when you put them back, though, uh, you can put, we will create a sheet. I called it the oddball sheet. And you'll indicate how many ballots are in that oddball batch. Um, then the once you and your partner have confirmed, yes, these are the batches of 50 uh, correct ballots. Both of us have looked at them. Both of us have, have counted 50 those clip batches will go into the counted ballot cartons under the table. I should have said that the cartons, of course, will be labeled one for each of the candidates and for the uncommitted votes for on the Democratic side and the Republican side. So that would be seven cartons in all. And then the moderator, once that's completed, will direct um, the counting of batches of 50 ballots plus the oddballs to arrive at the total for each candidate 
and for the uncommitted uh, votes as well. I'm not sure I was completely, was that clear to people at the end there? I think it'll be very obvious when you're doing it, but. Yeah, for some of you have um, worked audits before with us. And so, you know, in the audit, this is a process that we use. We take them and we batch them into groups of 50. And then we were doing other things with them. But here, all we're doing is batching them in groups of 50. And we know that's 50 votes for Trump or 50 votes for Biden or 50 votes for De La Fuente. So um, there's no tallying or anything. You just count them. Um, again, I think once you see it, uh, you'll be fine. Okay, Fred. And this is the grand finale of our uh, course this evening. So the moderators will record the total votes for each of those three deliveries I mentioned, the one at 10, the one at 2, and the one at 8 p.m. At the end of the day, those counts will be added together to arrive at the final tally, which will show a number for each candidate and for the Democratic uncommitted votes and the Republican uncommitted votes. And there'll also be a number for the rejected ballots. All of this added together should match the number of ballots we receive from the town clerk. And thank you all very much. I very much look forward to working with you at the primary. So we have to go over a couple of those quiz items now for the people who are going oh, to be watching this yes. on YouTube. Okay. So this one is an oral answer. There's nothing that's going to appear on the screen. People should be paying attention. Uh, Can you speak to, up a little louder, Fred? Sure, sure, Gail. Um, Gail, you automatically pass, so you don't have to worry. Okay? <laughs> it's so, fair. So, no fair. Well, Daryl, you have to. Everybody who's watching now passes. Okay. okay? <laughs> this is for people who are going to have to watch it later on. So... <laughs> The, the second answer is wear your mask, okay? Wear your mask is the second answer, okay? Okay, so now someone joined us midway through and it shows here that their name is 40 Carats. Can I ask who that is? Michelle Caranta. Okay, great. Thank you, Michelle, because we want to make sure that we get you for... Um, uh, attendance purposes. Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to be sending out that YouTube video. You you missed a little in the beginning. You can you can go and you can review that if you like uh, at at your convenience. Right. Um, okay. So um, uh, so now why don't we take questions if there are any questions, and then we'll do the final answer. Are there any questions related to the process? I have a question. This is Joe Williamson. Sure. Um, this is regarding the sorting ballots slide. Maybe you could just go back to that one. Yep. Uh, sorting ballots. Okay. Um, this is about um, bullet point one, two, three, four, five. Um, divide ballots and always exchange with your partner. So just wanted to clarify that. So I have a, I, I'm sorting a pile into uh, different piles by candidate. Do mm -hmm. I then pass those along to my partner who will then verify that they're all for the correct person? Correct. So you have gone through and divided into, chances are you will have at, at any given time, you'll either be working with Republican ballots or Democratic ballots just to you know, mentioned. So you will have, say you were working with the Democratic ballots at that time, you will have, you will have four piles that you've created. And what we want your partner to verify is that you didn't mistakenly put a Sanders ballot into a Biden pile. Got it. So w once I'm done making my four piles, just have my partner check over them. Yes, exactly. And yeah. there's, a, there's, there's a pass through okay. in this plexiglass window that you'll just be able to slide the pile through. They'll count it. And then once they've counted it, they can just go dump it in the, in the box. Yep. 
Okay. Brenda, we're not recording anything. Yeah. Like ordinarily times when we've count hand counted that we record on a piece of paper. Nope, no, no, there's no need. All we're gonna do okay. at the end is count okay. the number of clips and then the oddball and we're done. Okay? okay. So yeah, if there were obviously if there were multiple races on the ballots, yeah, then we'd be hand counting. But these the number of pieces of paper are the number of votes. Okay. Right. So that's why we felt comfortable doing it this way, because it's only the single race. If there had been even one more race, we would have done it differently. We would use the tabulator that creates its own set of issues. But we said this is simple enough. Put them in the box. Count them. OK, more questions? No. Um, because we're going to be doing that pre-sorting on <laughs> Monday, I think that um, that's going to create uh, the ability to have a more leisurely pace in the morning. And so th there will be plenty of opportunity for you to ask Mary questions uh, and to familiarize yourself with everything as you go. So even though there are a lot of ballots, um, basically the morning session should get you very familiar so that when the two o'clock session comes, which is going to be basically ballots that were received by the town clerk on Monday and Tuesday by mail, um, and that should be a few thousand ballots, you should, you know, you should be ready to go, sort of go through the whole, the whole process, okay? It'll be old hat at that point, all right, having been four hours in, so. More questions? Okay, so if there are no more questions, I'll give the final answer mm -hmm. for those who are going to be watching on YouTube. Okay, so answer number three, Emma Lazarus. Okay, Emma Lazarus, <laughs> Emma Lazarus wrote the, uh, the poem, The Colossus, which is on, I believe it's on the tablet. I'm not sure exactly where it is, of the uh, Statue of Liberty. And Mary and I were chatting about this earlier today, in particular, the first uh, few lines, which say, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, mask free, perhaps. But uh, that's, that'll be us when we get home after this fun filled day. Okay, of civic duty and patriotism. Okay, so again, Emma Lazarus is answer number three. Okay. All right, so if there are no more questions, then um, we're, we're uh, good for today. I will email you tomorrow on behalf of Mary and I with the link to the YouTube video and uh, we'll tell you where to get Mary's presentations. And then, you know, our phone numbers are in there. You don't hesitate to call either of us with questions. Mary will see you bright and early on either Monday or Tuesday. And I'll stop in and uh, pay a cameo visit at some point as well. Okay? Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you both. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Wow. What a lot of information. It is. Yes. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, Have a good you. night. Bye.